mic, frankly. Um, I need a little more ear, though, so I can hold this thing tight. <coughs> well, hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, my name is Mark Brown. Uh, I work for Microsoft. Uh, I'm in their uh, Redmond office uh, just outside of Seattle, Washington. Uh, I work as a community guy primarily, uh, so I manage a group of our MVPs and our Windows Azure insiders. These are just community folks that uh, get out there, they use the product, they talk about it, they create, I don't know, repos on GitHub, they share code, they do stuff like that. So I manage a program like that. Um, and I also manage uh, all of our strategic technology partners, so that would include guys like RightScale, New Relic, uh, other companies like MongoDB and Cloud and Lucid, folks that are doing like NoSQL, like Mongo or Couch or Solar or other stuff like that. Um, and here today, I'm going to talk about how hell has frozen over. Uh, just a quick question, who in this room is currently using either just testing or deployed in production uh, on a cloud provider like Amazon or, or maybe Rackspace? It's a show of hands. So that's yeah, roughly about half almost. So, And how many are using Amazon? So OK, so that's pretty much the same group. OK, well, I'm going to talk about a different uh, cloud platform, uh, and that's our, our Windows Azure platform. Um, so most of you, since you've done some uh, uh, cloud computing, realize that there are really kind of four workloads uh, that are most appropriate for, for leveraging the cloud. One is kind of the on and off, right? So that's, you know, maybe a test lab would be a good scenario, right? So if you're doing a monthly build or whatever build, you're going to go and spin up a bunch of servers, deploy your code, run it full out for a day or two, dump the logs, check it out, turn them off. Uh, second is growing really, really fast, so exponential growth. Instagram would be a great example of this, right? They had like a 10 million new users in one month last year. Uh, you know, from a, a traditional hosting perspective, or even if you're self-hosting, not possible, actually, to, to manage with that level of growth. Unpredictable bursting, this would be better known as slash dotting, uh, maybe, uh, where you're just getting hit and slammed, uh, you know, either legitimately or through DDoS, but either way. <laughs> Uh, sudden spikes, uh, and then of course predictable bursting. Uh, E-commerce sites would, would typically find this kind of scenario right during the holidays when everyone's going and shopping. These four patterns really are represent kind of the benefits, the major benefits and the reasons why you would use a cloud computing platform over say traditional hosting or certainly self-hosting. There's kind of three flavors of cloud computing. Um, there's SaaS, which I'll start with on the right. Everybody knows SaaS, right? Gmail is SaaS. Uh, so even your mom is probably using SaaS, right? Salesforce would be a SaaS uh, type of, a, of a, a cloud computing, right? Every, when you want something new, you simply go to a portal and you provision it, it's there for you. PaaS, more of a platform as a service, this is where you don't manage anything except for the app yourself, right? The OS and all of its patching and everything else, runtimes, libraries, everything underneath is already managed for you. Orchestra is a good example of this. Uh, before, the most recent release for Windows Azure, we were primarily a PaaS, right? So we managed the OS and everything. You basically took and packaged up your app and any of its dependencies and you threw them up in our cloud. And the last version is IaaS, or Infrastructure as a Service. And this is what traditionally Amazon or maybe even Rackspace uh, has been known for, right? Now, the difference here is you're basically managing at the OS level, right? So the thing that's virtualized is the OS itself, but you're managing installation of anything, you're managing patching of the VM itself, and then of course the application stack up above it. So today what I want to talk to you about is these three things uh, for Windows Azure. Uh, we'll talk about our new virtual machines, cloud services, and then another feature called websites. Actually not quite in that order either. Uh, so with Windows Azure we have eight data centers around the world. Uh, there's one not too far over in Ireland here, one in Northern Europe, a bunch in the U.S., and then some in Asia, and, and 24 CDN pops uh, as well. We also have a 99.95 monthly SLA, and I want to give you a quick look. So this is our portal uh, that just, we just released here in June. So this thing, prior our portal used to be written all in Silverlight. So if you were running on a Mac, uh, it was difficult. If you were running on Linux, it was impossible. Uh, to use our portal. This thing, all built HTML5, uh, actually will render on a cell phone, in fact. It's a little tight, uh, but frankly, on an iPad, on my iPad, it works rather well and looks rather beautiful. And I can sit there and I can provision new VMs and new services 
uh, just sitting there on my couch. So let's talk about our virtual machines. So virtual machines is a new feature we've just added uh, with our latest release. Uh, and we have now support for, of course, Windows Server and Linux. Uh, so you can see from this slide here, you can get multiple flavors of just straight Windows Server, or you can get it pre-baked with things like BizTalk, which is kind of an EDI or EAI server, uh, as well as SQL Server, and then our new Windows Server 2012. And then off to the right there, we've got three flavors of Linux. You've got Ubuntu, CentOS, OpenSUSE, and then SUSE Enterprise. And not only that, but there's these three uh, Linux providers from Canonical, OpenLogic, and SUSE are also providing support packages uh, as well for each of their uh, Linux distributions. We also have CLI tools. Uh, we, of course, have our PowerShell tools for people that are using Windows. PowerShell is a very nice and powerful uh, uh, scripting uh, language, if you will. Uh, and then we also have downloads and support for our CLI tools on both Mac and Linux. Uh, these were written in Node.js, uh, so they work rather well. It's got a very small footprint. Uh, and you can download these things and just fire them up. Uh, you can you go and pull your account credentials down from uh, our portal, and then this is largely kind of with the cute little ASCII art. Do you see that at the top there? You guys like the ASCII art? No? Is that too old school? All right. I kind of thought it was cool, actually. It must have taken some dude like a couple of weeks, just a one pixel at a time going over with that. Uh, but within here, you can manage your account, uh, config for the, uh, for the CLI itself. You can manage your websites within there. Uh, and you can manage your services, and then, of course, your uh, virtual machines uh, as well in there. Uh, for all of our VMs, we provide a, a persistent storage, uh, and this is better known as our blob storage. So blob storage is essentially kind of like S3 uh, within Amazon, highly available, can be exposed over HTTP. Um, and then kind of the way this works is, you know, you can just take and upload your data in here, and then, as part of our service, we will automatically triple replicate anything you load up uh, into blob storage there. So uh, if anything in there fails, we will automatically take and move that over. So you're always going to be up uh, in there. You can also use this with uh, the virtual machine persistent drives. So when you go and create persistent drives in there, like a data disk or something like that, we'll also triple replicate that. In addition, not only do we have triple replication, but we also have geo-replication. So if anything happens in one particular data center and an entire data center goes down, uh, your data is always going to be working. Next, I want to talk about our websites. So what we realized when we were building all the new services is that we have a PaaS platform, and that works pretty well. But we realized that building the PaaS is difficult, right? There's trade-offs with the approach you take or the type of cloud platform you take. Uh, when you build applications. PaaS is great, and you can scale it and scale it down. Uh, the problem is, is that you have to write for PaaS. So PaaS isn't really good for new workloads, or excuse me, for existing workloads. It's more appropriate for an IaaS, right, where you can take and virtualize the OS and then upload the image into the cloud and then run it that way. What we realized is that adding IaaS wasn't enough really to solve the problem. There was still a gap here, and that is kind of at the lower end of the workload, if you will. When I showed that those four patterns of cloud computing, those four really work really well if you're talking about an IaaS or a PaaS environment. But what was really missing was kind of just the lower end of that scale, right? So people that are maybe just starting out and have a simple website, or even something that's actually reasonably, reasonably sized as a website, but still doesn't fit that pattern where it's going to take advantage of all the benefits of cloud computing. So we created a new service, uh, our Windows Azure websites. Now here you can build any website you want. You can use, of course, ASP.NET, uh, but we also have support for Node.js in there and PHP. Uh, we also have support for deploying uh, uh, sites using uh, Microsoft's web deploy technology. Uh, if you're using Windows, this is very handy. Uh, or you can just use regular FTP, and we also have support for Git. So just to give you an example, if you want to create a new website, it didn't render very well, did it? Uh, very simple to create a new website. I can go in here and just type cake PHP. Uh, although I didn't really, I didn't take that. Uh, you select the region uh, that you want that website to be deployed in, uh, and then you have a choice for a database. So out of the box, we have support for SQL Server databases. So SQL Server run as a service within Windows Azure. We're all also offering now MySQL as a service. So you can go and create a new MySQL database to support your new website in there. 
Here's a look at our portal. So when you get your website up and running, we have a very nice dashboard in there. It can give you activity on CPU use, CPU time, uh, data in and out, or request. You can also customize this uh, for uh, looking at different metrics that you care about within there. And then, of course, we have support for Git. So if you want to go and use Git for doing your deployments inside there, uh, you can go and create a Git repository on there. It'll give you some handy little help, like here's the URL for your Git. And then if you go down further, we'll actually say, here, go download Git if you don't have it. Uh, and then just give you commands for uh, cloning that site and then just pushing it back to master in there. So websites is pretty cool. Is this someone's water? You didn't? Mm. Is this is this sparkling? Is this still or sparkling? Yeah, me. Ah, it's dry. Um, back to sorry, back to websites. So, with our websites offering, uh, what we have is essentially a sh two two forms of this thing. We have a shared multi-tenant and then a reserved mode. So, when you go in, you sign up for a new website. This is going to start you off in uh, shared multi-tenant. So. You go and you start off with one shared instance. Now, the way this works is that your application is actually sitting and wrapped in a process, and we'll manage that on a farmer servers and get about, I don't know, thousands of websites basically uh, running on a single server. Let's just say you, you, know, you write a blog and you're getting pretty successful and your site is slowing down a little bit and you need a little more, uh, uh, you need a little more uh, processor power. Uh, you can go into the portal and just simply go into a slider and say, I want two processes now. Uh, and we'll go and we'll take you, wrap your app, and then we'll deploy that into a second process and then load balance it for you automatically so you don't have to do anything. What's going on with this? Let's say you are getting even more popular. Uh, so you can then go into our reserved instance mode. Now what this will do is we'll take and move uh, your application out of the shared process and then we'll move it into its own reserved instance. This is functionally a virtual machine in there. And then from there you can go and scale that up to multiple versions of or multiple virtual machines, either one, two, or as many as your account will allow. And then we'll automatically load balance that for you. In addition, if you want, you can take these reserved instances of these VMs uh, and then add more apps to it. Uh, we'll continue to scale that out as you want. Let me talk about our cloud services. So this is what we had before was our cloud services, our PaaS platform. And really the benefit for this is that you can really infinitely scale your application uh, to be as large as you want, or as large as a data center is, frankly. Uh, you know, support for building really rich, multi-tier, decoupled applications. Uh, and then of course we manage your applications within there. The way this works is you write your application and then you package it, you create a service package. And then you take that service package and then you push it up into Azure And then what we'll do is we'll provision the role instances for you. So let's just say I've got my app here. I'm going to provision four role instances to run this application. And then we'll take that application and its role instances. We'll deploy it into the Azure Data Center. You like the animations? Are these nice? They're running a little slow today. And then after your application has been deployed, we'll automatically go and set up the network load balancing on there. Now the nice thing with our PaaS platform is that, say, if one of your instances just goes sideways on you, we'll go and kick it out and then redeploy your application into another role instance and then set it up uh, with low, and then load balance that one as well. So for our PaaS platform, we have support for multiple languages in there. We've got support for .NET, for Node.js, for PHP, of course, for Java, uh, and then also for Python. And we're looking at bringing on more languages uh, just kind of as we go along. In addition, all the SDKs that you use uh, are available as open source. So you can go to GitHub, clone them, check them out. Uh, if you sign our CLA, you can actually go and issue a pull request uh, if you want to go and contribute to these things uh, and make them better as well. Just to give you an example of some of the building blocks, we've got, there's a lot of different services available for people that are building applications on our cloud. We've got big data uh, as well. We're actually been working with the Hadoop guys to provide Hadoop on Azure as a service. Uh, we have our SQL database, our, our SQL Server database in the cloud. Storage, I talked a little bit about blob storage. We also have a, what we call a table storage, which is kind of no SQL uh, within there. 
Uh, what else? We've got message or queuing uh, available within there. So if you want to build highly decoupled applications, which is the pattern you should follow if you want to build a very scalable uh, cloud-friendly application. Identity, we have uh, our Windows Azure Active Directory available in there. So if you need to integrate with an existing Active Directory, uh, you can do that. Media is another one. So we've got Windows Azure Media Services. This provides services for ingesting, encoding, uh, DRMing, um, caching and delivery. You can do on-demand or streaming through there. This is very cool. If you're doing any media work at all, I suggest you take a look at that. Uh, I talked about CDNs and then of course networking. We have support for virtual networking uh, within there. So you can create tunnels from say a corporate network into your public cloud. If you have issues, and I see a lot of this in Europe where customers need to have their data stored on premise, you can functionally create an app that sits in the cloud and then communicates to your corporate office where you keep all your data. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to kind of cruise through here. SQL database, so this is our SQL Server relational database, uh, clustered uh, for high availability, fully managed service, PHP driver available for this. It's the same PHP driver you would use with regular SQL Server as you would use with this. Oh, there it is, PHP driver. Uh, and then also our cache service, so this is the low latency in memory cache, high availability, and we have memcached uh, protocol support uh, in here as well. Here's an eye chart on pricing. Uh, and you can see that it's extra small, uh, two cents per service hour, all the way up to 96 cents per service hour. Uh, and then you can kind of get an idea of the unit of compute defined here. So anything from a, like a one, one gigahertz, low I.O., uh, well, it's about 768 of memory and 20 gig of storage, all the way up to uh, an eight-way machine with 14 gig of memory uh, and like two terabytes of storage in there. Running a little over, oh, this is my last slide. Uh, so you can start now. We have, uh, you can sign up and get three months free uh, right now uh, from windowsazure.com. Uh, I also have about 50 of these little one month handouts. So if you don't have a live ID, although I know you all do, right? Because everybody plays Xbox, right? Okay, so, so you don't, you can't, you can't fool me, right? Everybody's got a live ID or whatever. What do we call it? Microsoft ID now. So use your Microsoft ID. Uh, and sign up, get three months free, kick the tires on this thing. I think we'll give you about four, five, six cores to play with, lots of storage, storage transactions, bandwidth, uh, go in there. Our websites are free, you get 10 free websites uh, within there, but you only get one MySQL database, so, but if you want to use data, or uh, create websites that don't use the database, or use the same database, you can do that. Anyway, start at windowsazure.com, that's it, and then uh, be sure to go 